Welcome to Vector Boogie. We're going to learn about physics. We're going to learn about vectors. We're going to have a heck of a good time. So get your thinking caps on and get ready to project your vectors. But seriously, folks, we want to talk about vectors because we think that vectors are one of the most important concepts you can learn in a physics class. So what is a vector? A vector is an object, a mathematical object with a direction and a length. You could think of it as an arrow pointing in some direction in space that represents a physical quantity like a force or a velocity or anything else for that matter that has a direction. A vector, in other words, is a tool that you can use to think about things that have a direction. All right, all right, enough with the music already. Uh, okay, where were we? Let's see. Um, direction and magnitude. When you think about it, that's really all there is to vectors. Direction is which way does it point? Is it north, south, east, west? Which way? In the x direction, in the y direction? Magnitude is how big is it? If it's a velocity, its size is measured in meters per second, say. If it's a, direct, if it's a displacement, on the other hand, its magnitude, its size, is going to be measured in it, 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 units of distance, or meters, or kilometers, or light years, or something along those lines. That's all there is to it, direction and magnitude. How do you add vectors together? They're not much use unless you can manipulate them mathematically, so we need to learn how to add vectors to one another. So let's imagine we have two vectors, A and B. Vector A might be a vector that looks like this. Vector B could be a vector that looks a little bit like this. And the question is, what does it mean to add them together? The answer is, it means that we, we want to know, for example, if A and B are displacements, what would the displacement be if I displaced an object along the vector A and then subsequently displaced it along the vector B? The answer is the vector C. It's the vector that goes from the tail of A to the head of B. Now, there are lots of other kinds of vectors. There are velocity vectors and force vectors and so on. And all of those different kinds of vectors have some concept of addition. Mathematically, the addition always works this way. Subtraction is a little different matter. In subtraction, I have a vector A, and I want to subtract from it the vector B to arrive at the resultant vector, or the difference vector, C. Now, the problem with the difference vector is that you don't stick it on to A. <clears throat> you don't stick A and B together the same way you do with addition to get C. You, you, the idea is that C is the vector you have to add to B to get A. Let's look at that. The idea is C is equal to A minus B. But I want you to notice that if I add B to both sides of this equation, I get C plus B is A minus B plus B. But if I subtract B from A and then add it again, which is what I ended up doing here by adding B to both sides, the B's are going to go away on the right-hand side, and I'm left with the equation that A is equal to C plus B. In other words, C is the vector when added to B that produces A. All right. That's what it is. If I flip it around, I get A is equal to C plus B. That's the same as C is equal to A minus B. Now, if we only dealt with pictures, this would get, uh, <clears throat> well, it'd get tricky when we wanted to do something precisely because we'd have to draw the picture very carefully, and of course, we're, we're no good at that. So we like to make things a little more mathematical. So we introduce the concept of components. The components of A are the are the amount or the degree to which A points in the directions of our coordinate system. So for example, if we have a coordinate system where the horizontal direction is X and the vertical direction is Y, this is sort of the normal state of affairs, then the X component of A is going to be the, the part of the A vector that points in the X direction. And the Y component of A is going to be the part of the A vector that points in the Y direction. And the vector sum of the X and Y components turns out to be nothing other than A. So you can say that the x component of A plus the y component of A added as vectors produce the vector A. Now the x component of A as a vector has a size which we sometimes also call the x component. So be careful. Now the vector B 
is the same vector b we had before, but now you can look at it in terms of its x and y components. Notice the x component of b in this picture points to the left. The x component of a points to the right. So if we were talking about just the coordinates of the x and y component vectors of a and b, the x component of a would have a positive x coordinate, the x component of b would have a negative. So sometimes you'll hear us talking about negative components and positive components. Understand that components only make sense in the context of a coordinate system, and positive and negative only make sense in the context of a coordinate system. So you got to be careful about that too. But anyway, those are the components of b. I want you to notice that when I put c up here, that the y components of a and b add together to be the y component of C, and the x components of A and B add together to be the x components of C. So you have still the equation C is A plus B, but if we look at it component by component, you can see that the x component of C is the sum of the x components of A and B. The y component of C is the sum of the y components of A and B. Sometimes we need to know the length of a vector given its components, and we can do that by using a simple equation that you already know. Because you notice that the components of A form a right triangle, with the vector A being the hypotenuse, and the short legs of the right triangle being the x and y components. And you all know how to get the length of a hypotenuse of a triangle given the short sides. It's just the Pythagorean theorem. The magnitude of A is the square root of the sum of the squares of the two sides. That's pretty easy. Then sometimes we, we know the components and we need to get the angle. Well, it turns out the tangent of the angle is the ratio of the short opposite side to the short adjacent side. I mean, opposite to the angle and adjacent to the angle. And by short, of course, I just mean they're not the hypotenuse, they're the short sides. All right, and finally, sometimes we need to get the components of a, of a vector given its magnitude and the angle that the hypotenuse makes relative to the short side. And uh, we can do that using trigonometry. The x component is the, mag the, the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of that angle. And of course, the y component is the magnitude of the vector times the sine of that angle. Now, the location of the angle is somewhat arbitrary. And the label x and y are also arbitrary. They're, they're totally dependent on the coordinate system we set up. And we'll talk more about coordinate systems later. Anyway, that's the end. I hope you had fun. Uh, good luck.